We're not all descended from the Puritans. No? There was another colony 30 miles from Plymouth. It's not on the maps today. Merrimount, it's yeah. called. All right, you mentioned in your book. The colony where anything goes, went. There was booze. There was booze. There was fornication. There was music. There was, they even, uh, <laughs> you name it, you name it. They, they even danced around the Maypole once a month, wearing masks, worshipping God knows what, whites and Indians together, all going for broke. Who was responsible for all of this? character by the name of Thomas Morton. Ah, the Hugh Hefner of the Puritans. <laughs> you could say that. Yeah. I'm going to read you a quote of, of what the Puritans thought of, of Morton's followers. Debauched bacchanalians and atheists falling into great licentiousness and leading degenerate lives. When I heard that, I packed my bags, I left Oxford, <laughs> I came straight to America. America, the licentious. So what happened to all of those people? Well, the Puritans shut them down. They sent in Miles Standish leading the militia, he chopped down the maypole, cut down those colored ribbons, banners, everything. Party was over. And we became a nation of straight-laced Puritans. Well, isn't that your point, though? The Puritans won. They stamped out all things sexual. How would you say it? Sexual happiness. Happiness. Exactly. Until the 1960s. Until the 1960s, when it all exploded again all over the place. Right. Everyone was dancing around the maypole. Then, <laughs> make love, not war. If you remember, only a decade earlier, if you, if you wanted to have sex, if you wanted to make love in the 1950s, you had to beg for it, you had to cop a feel. Or get married. As I did in the 1960s. Any regrets? Plenty. Um, but that's our secret. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> That's just between you and me.